Glory to God. Do you love the Lord today? Yeah. I know you do, because if you didn't, you wouldn't be in a church, right? Have you ever noticed that the, the, the greatest, in most people's lives, the greatest, the most challenging day to get out of the bed is usually Sunday? Come on now. Okay, I'll say that. I don't know. I'll go up down the middle because ain't nobody saying. The most challenging day to get out of the bed, you feel sicker on Sunday. You get, your kids get more disruptive on Sunday or Saturday night. Right? Have you figured that out yet? Come on now. We're smarter than that, right? You know, if you're sick, you don't need to stay home. Oh, Okay. Y'all ain't seen, y'all just, I'm back. I'm just, you know, I'm back. I took a, took a, a brief, <laughs> brief time off by necessity. And my wife, who is a, an amazing teacher, just kind of just laid the, laid the gauntlet down. And um, so I'm delighted to be back. And uh, I'm, I was getting a little restless. I was getting a little restless. But I don't really have a sermon, but I do have a message from the Lord for you today. I, I, I want to give, I, I give you, uh, you need something to write with or put a note in your phone or tablet, whatever you do. I want you to reserve a date for me. Can you reserve a date for me? Yes, sir. Is March of 2019 too far out for you to reserve a date? No. no. No? How about the evening, which is a Sunday, March 17th? Can you reserve that date, that evening? We're going to be right here, and we're going to entertain a very special guest by the name of Dr. Jerry Savell. And so he's coming to be a blessing to us and to this ministry. He is a, my spiritual father, my wife and I. Is, and uh, first time we've been able to, to get him. Really, I hadn't invited him. So I can't say it had nothing to do with him not coming. I just hadn't invited him. And so he accepted the invitation. As a matter of fact, his, his calendar is already booked out through 2020. And when we asked him if he would come, he penciled us in. He said, well, the only time I can come is in that evening. And I said, we'll have you. We'd be more than glad. So I want you to prepare your hearts for that. We're going to send out some notices. I would imagine, you know, we're going to do our best, but you might want to come early that night, if none other. And uh, we'll probably open this wall or that wall. We'll just see what the Lord says. Amen. So March 17th at 6 p.m., uh, you can go to his website, jsmi.org. I know our webmaster will get it up on ours as well, March 17th at 6 p.m. right here. So we're delighted for that. So I just figured I'd let you know that. Uh, the Lord blessed my wife and I so tremendously the other day, and I'm not at liberty to share what that looks like. But I'm here to tell you that, that this, this works. This works. This works. And God has a plan for your and my success that you just, you can't comprehend in your natural mind. Your natural thinking was never designed by God to be able to understand this. And I'm going to prove that to you in just a minute. But by God's grace, he's given us the power of the Holy Ghost. Isn't that right, Reverend Ferries? He's given us the power of the Holy Ghost. And the power of the Holy Ghost is, is not equal to it's greater than anything that you'll ever face Amen. and we have we have uh, really uh, shortchanged ourselves by being in places that have not taught us these things or don't believe these things Amen. one of the reasons I, I'll say this one of the reasons why we teach on money around here or finances not really just money but finances because many of you have gone to churches where it was just assumed if you grew up one one reformation or one denomination or another you know you'd have pledges you have different things that you had to give you just gave it without you just put it in the bucket come on don't get quiet on me and so but you're you're you need to be free financially out of debt Amen. right yeah. have all your needs met the Bible says that you should have enough to put in store and to sow to every good work. In order to do that, somebody's going to have to teach you this stuff. You know, and it, some may say, well, it takes too long. Well, look, how long it take you to get in debt? Right? And so what we're trying to do is get you and you say, well, I don't know anybody that, that's debt free. Well, you're looking at one that's on the way. And there's a couple people in this room that are, that, that are there. And debt free is a whole lot better than being in, in debt. Dodging phone calls, stretching from one week to the next, one month to the next. Come on now. Are you here this morning? And God's plan and his desire for us is that we would walk and live in the blessing, the blessing that he has for us that came from him as it was anointed and appointed upon the life of Abraham. Can you say amen to that? Where's my timekeeper this morning, please? Let's pray and then we'll get started in the word of God. Father, I thank you so much for this, your amazing group of beloved people. 
men, women, young and old, you have a destiny and a plan for their lives, for all of our lives, God, that some of us have yet to tap into. So, Father, I just release a prophetic anointing on this place today. I declare that the eyes of the understanding of the people of God are clear and open wide so that we can see and hear what goes on and what thus saith the Lord. Jesus, your prayer was that we would have ears to hear and eyes to see. And we receive your, the answered prayer right now by faith and declare that I will not be distracted. I will not get antsy. I will be patient to hear what you have say, to say to us today by the power of your living Christ. I thank you, Father, for the anointing that rests upon my life. Thank you for what you're doing, destroying yokes and removing burdens to bless your people. If you agree with that prayer, can you say amen? amen. I, want you, I want to invite you to, to turn... Uh, I'm going to go through a couple of scriptures here today. Uh, I don't plan on this is this is actually a continuation. To, this is actually a continuation of what uh, I've actually been was talking about when I, I taught last. So you may hear some things if you were here uh, that took place at the end of July. But I'm going to I just want to finish so I can step into the next realm of what God wants to do. Is that all right? So I'm going to invite your attention to the book of Hebrews. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Glory to God. Hebrews, the fifth chapter. I, I will say, as you turn there, and, and they'll put it on the board if you don't have a Bible, I will say this for the benefit of those who maybe you have not been with us for a while, or maybe um, this is your first time as a guest. Uh, we're, we're, we're moving beyond what you may have known in another church. Um, this, this is uh, not to be misunderstood in the sense that you didn't walk into a place where we just talk Bible stories, okay? Yeah. I may not even mention the word sin because you've heard that word enough in your lifetime and you will hear it again, but you might not hear it today. Amen. Are you gonna to talk to me this morning? Yeah. So with that, I welcome your close attention uh, we will have the message posted at some point on our YouTube channel. If you need to get it, we don't, we don't uh, utilize CDs anymore. At some point, we'll be utilizing flash drives, but that's, that day is not today. So if you, if you just pay attention, you'll get what God has for you. The rest of you Bible students need to open your ears and eyes real wide and see because God has taken us somewhere, and I want to make sure that you understand where he's taken us, especially those of you that have partnered with LifePoint. Can you say amen to that? Hebrews, the fifth chapter and the 10th verse. I'm going to invite your attention to this. I am going to read it from the expanded Bible. It says, in this way, God made or designated, appointed Jesus a high priest. Again, Hebrews 5, starting at verse 10. He was a priest like Melchizedek. Write down somewhere Psalm 110 and 4 as a reference. You can write that down. I'm not going to turn there. So the next thing he does in this writing, the author then directs them to, to be careful not to fall away. Okay, are you looking at me? Are you hearing me? Be careful not to fall away. He doesn't give the warning unless it's a high probability that it's going to happen. In our society, in our day and age, people are falling away in the, in the hundreds of thousands. Okay, doesn't mean they won't be back. Doesn't mean that Jesus won't re receive them, that they won't make it to heaven. But you and I need to be careful that not, we're not one of those. Are you hearing me this morning? So verse 11 says, we have much to say about this. About what? About the high priestly ministry of Jesus. Okay? But it is hard to explain because you are so slow to understand. Now, what is he talking about? He's talking about spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding and mental, mental uh, uh, acquiring of knowledge are two, two entirely different things. And too often we've come to church with mental uh, acceptance of what we think God is saying and doing. And most of us, myself included, have found that it does not work if you just do it with your head. It only works if you activate these things spiritually. So he goes on, verse 12 says, by now you should be teachers, but you need someone to teach you again. Say the word again. again. The first lessons. He's talking about things and he lists them. The first lessons, first lessons, excuse me, elementary truths or basic principles of God's message. Let me say that again. By now you should be teachers, but you need someone to teach you again the first lessons, elementary truths, or basic principles of God's message, right? You still need the teaching that is like milk. You are not ready for solid food. For anyone who lives on milk is still a baby and knows nothing about right teaching. I'm going to say what this says. It says you are unskilled or inexperienced 
with a word. The whole purpose that we come to, particularly this church, I don't know about other churches. I don't go to other churches. I only spend time here on Sunday. The reason why we come to this church is so that you can increase your skill level. Somebody going to talk to me this morning. You have to increase your skill level. You have to be able to go into a place, take spiritual authority over it, and recognize that the devil should not be the one running the show. You got somebody that shows up at work and they're acting all funky and foul. You shouldn't just cow to that. You shouldn't just cower down to that. Doesn't mean you have to raise your fist, but you should be taking authority. If you can't say anything out loud, you need to be praying under your breath or praying in the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus, not today. And that spirit will try to, because what happens is what the devil recognizes that we don't recognize is that we don't many times recognize how unskilled we are. And we've been trying to figure out for years why our prayers don't get answered. Why? I've been praying for Bubba. I've been praying for, for my, my daughter. I've been praying for my son. Prayer is not the answer to everything. Are oh, we going to go somewhere today? Hey, prayer is not the answer to everything. You need to get up off your knees and open your mouth and declare something because you are the one walking around as a God man or a God woman taking authority. Now, the devil doesn't like to hear that because, see, that puts the work back on you and I. But can I tell you that Jesus already declared that everything that you and I need, could ever need or, or have need of in this life or the life to come has already been paid for. And if you're trying to write the check, your checkbook is not big enough. I told you I had a message from the Lord, amen? Come on now. So he goes on to say, again, in, in verse 13 now, anyone who lives on milk is still a baby and knows nothing or is unskilled or inexperienced with right teaching. For the message, excuse me, or the message about righteousness. Can I stop and pause right there for a minute? It is so, it is so um, challenging for me to hear people who, who, who do not understand about their righteousness. And to be quite frank with you, it's a little, it's a little, um, mm, I gotta be, I'm choosing my words carefully. It's a little distressing sometimes that people who have heard the word who have served the master for more than just a week, been in the faith for, or been a Christian for 15 years, still call themselves unworthy. It is a slap in the face, into the face of Jesus Christ. How dare you and I say that we're, we're not worthy or we're, you know, somehow or another we're a sinner. You can't be a sinner, you know this, saved by grace. You can't be both. And what you do and what the devil does is he tries to keep you in that mental thinking, thinking somehow or another that you have something to do with your own righteousness. Help me this morning. Your righteousness is not your own. The Lord Jesus Christ went to that cross, not you, not me. And when he went to the cross, he declared at the conclusion that it is finished. Now, what was he finishing? He was finishing the redemptive work of the master, of the father. The father doesn't want to live without you and I. He don't want you poor. He don't want you broke. I wish I could get some help in here this morning. He doesn't want you sick. You're not supposed to be sick. But see, we, see, see, what's happened is we've gotten so far away from the, you know, we used to, we criticize the old church. You fill in the blank, whatever your idea of the old church is. You know, I told you this before. We, you know, I came up, I grew up in the church of God in Christ, Pentecostal, you know, strict Pentecostal. You know, and I, I, I have my fault, my issues with them, but I love the people. You know, I don't like some of their practices, but I love the people. But the most pronounced thing about them is that when they didn't know Hebrew and Greek and all the other uh, 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 languages and all the interpretations, they didn't have all these things. All they had was the power of God and they could get demons out your life. You know, and nowadays we got all this stuff, but we, we got baggage in our life that can't nobody get out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Same as somebody. So anyway, so moving forward, okay? So we're going to tell to your neighbor and say, you're real skillful. And tell, to, tell that to the same thing on the other side. Tell somebody else that you're real skillful. In the word, say in the word. Verse 14, but solid food is for those who are grown up. The word grown up means mature. They are mature enough, it says, through what? Practice, exercise, have trained their faculties or senses, make a mark right there somewhere in 14 or make a note, to know the difference between good and evil. Now that's a very important statement to what we're gonna talk about today. Where's Dominic? Where's Dominic? 
Where you at? Okay. Don't let him go because he'll run up here, uh, <laughs> which I would enjoy, but I couldn't get the message out holding him. Um, he knows the difference between good and evil, but we call it right and wrong. He does. Just turn two in July, he knows the difference. Now, knowing the difference between good and evil is not enough for you to be successful in the kingdom of God. I know somebody might say, well, I know I'm not supposed to do that. Well, then don't do it. You're smart enough not to do it. But then you turn around and do it anyway. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you do it anyway because you're wondering, well, now what? you know how you are. I know how I am. I can't use you as an example. I know how I am. What do you do that for? You know, my wife, I'll do something. I'll be with my wife. And she said, what are you doing? And I was like, what? I didn't even consciously think of what I was doing. I did something that seemed uh, out of character for me. And so she, she helps me get back in line. You know, she and the Holy Ghost are partners. So they, you know, she helps me get back in line. And so, so, but I look at it, and I'm wondering, hmm, why did I do that? Can somebody tell me why you did that? Because chapter 7 of the book of Romans says sin is always present with you. So it always gives you the tendency to do something stupid. I used that word with her. She said, you're not stupid, honey. I said, I did something stupid. But that doesn't make you stupid. And what the devil wants to do is when you do something out of character, when you do something that is not in line with God's word, he wants you to stop right there and just sit there and be so pitiful that, what did I do that for? Why did that happen? Oh my God, what are they going to think? Don't nobody care. Because they're too busy doing the same thing in their own lives. Are you feeling me this morning? Just like people to say, well, if I come to church, I've been in church a long time, people are going to talk about it. They're going to talk about you because they're too busy trying to keep people from talking about them. Oh, okay. So good and evil is not enough, and the discerning of good and evil is not enough for you, to, you and I, because we have to understand that there is a greater plan that God has for us. So you can go ahead and let Hebrews go. I'm, I'm going to direct your attention to the book of Genesis now, please, if I could. Genesis, that would be found in the very beginning of a Bible. Let me talk about some things and get out of your way here, amen? Thank you, Jesus. Certainly delighted. Yesterday we had our Home Point Leaders training, and boy, it was good. I tell you what, real good, real good. Kudos to the discipleship and training team, particularly Cynthia Fisher, did a masterful job. Amen. Amen. Genesis 2, verse 15. I'm going to read from the expanded Bible. When you have it, say amen, please. Amen. Genesis 2, verse 15. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Father, we just love you. We pause. <laughs> I hear your voice, so I'm pausing. We welcome your presence even greater, in a greater dimension, a greater manifestation. Yes, Lord, minister as you see fit. Uh-huh. There's somebody that has a chest pain. I don't think it's a heart issue. I think it's a muscle that's, that's either hurting. I don't know if you slept wrong or if it's pulled. Who is that? Put your hands down for a minute so I can see who that is. Somebody's got a chest issue, something going on. I know I heard him, so... Might be your right side, left side. Anybody? Okay. Is it you? Okay, could be. But there's somebody in here. I sense that. It, 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 okay. And most of the time, I'm not perfect. So I, when, I, when I'm listening to him, he's perfect. But sometimes I miss it. But nine times out of ten, somebody will tell me outside in the lobby, that was me. I should have said something. So you got to receive your. Could be on YouTube. That's right. Could be on YouTube. It could be you on YouTube. If that's you, just lay your hands on yourself and declare over yourself the healing power of God's coursing through your body right now. Come on, do that. Do that. This is what we're talking about. Growing up, you're becoming more skillful when you do that. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Verse 15 says, the Lord God put the man, or Adam, in the Garden of Eden to care for it, till it, and to work it, or to take care of it. He was responsible for looking after it, right? Verse 16 says, the Lord God commanded him you may eat the fruit from any tree, or we could say from all the trees, in the garden. But, say but. but. Verse 17, you must not eat the fruit from the tree which gives the knowledge of good and evil. Eating from this tree would make Adam, listen to me, eating from this tree would make Adam, not God, the determiner of right and wrong. Are you hearing me this morning? 
Okay, let's read that again, because I want to make sure we understand this. Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about, again, we've been talking about from, a, from the a prophetic word from the beginning of the year, learning the potential in every seed, right? And we establish now that we've been talking about the fruit of the Spirit, and this is the introduction to that, but this is the concluding part of that. This is actually part five of that. So, but I want you to hear this again, verse 17. But you must not eat the fruit from the tree. Did he say not to touch it? He said not to what? Eat it. Why? Because this tree gives the knowledge of good and evil. So eating from this tree would make Adam, not God, the determiner of right and wrong. If you ever eat fruit from that tree, you will certainly die. Now, that's the word of God. Say amen. amen. So what is happening? We're going to focus here as long as I need to, even if we end here. Get a picture of what is happening because we can't go on to where we're going to until we get a clear snapshot of what is happening in the discourse between God and Adam in the garden. Are you with me? Imagine yourself standing there as a bystander, looking on, hearing the Lord talk to Adam, uh, their, their, their fellowship, and so on and so forth. So let's look at what God does say. God says, you have the right, Adam, to govern everything, even the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Is that right? Okay, but he gives, them a, gives him a clear instruction, don't eat it. Come on now, stay with me. Don't tune me out. We're growing up spiritually, right? We're becoming more mature, right? More skillful in the word. Because it's the word where your answers are. It's the word that's going to turn your life around. It's going to turn your marriage around. It's going to turn your physical body around. It's going to turn everything around. But if you don't have the word... And you only hear it once on Sunday, you're not skillful. You ain't going to be skillful. You can't convince me that you're skillful. All right. So he, he lets him know this. Now, he also does this. And I'm going to go point by point. Let's, let's look at knowledge. First of all, knowledge. I'm going to define it real quick. Knowledge is perception, skill, discernment, understanding, wisdom. This is knowledge. I'm going to say it again. Knowledge is discernment, excuse me, perception, skill, discernment, understanding, and wisdom. That's the Bible, literal Hebrew translation into English of what God said. Now, I'm going to give you the Webster's Dictionary. You don't have to write this down. You can, however you want to do it, I'll try to keep it short here, but. Mm-hmm. Knowledge is a clear and certain perception of that which exists or of truth and fact. The perception of the connection and agreement and the repugnancy of our ideas. Now, I'm going to say it again. A clear and certain perception, there's more, but I'm not going to go any further than that. You can look it up on your own. Of that which exists or of truth and fact. This is knowledge. Now, this is the Webster's Dictionary, 1828 Dictionary uh, definition of knowledge. All right. And it is a clear and certain perception of that which exists or of truth and fact. The perception of the connection and agreement or repugnancy of our ideas. OK, everybody with me. It is also the learning or illumination of the mind. Learning or illumination of the mind. You know, one place in scripture, the Bible says that the entrance of your word brings light. Now, what it is not, refer what this definition is not referring to your spiritual understanding. It is referring to your mind. Come on now. Your mind, when you receive knowledge, you increase. Right? You learn how anybody in here can, can eat with chopsticks. Okay? A couple, few people. I can't. I don't have that knowledge. I use a fork. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. Now, if I really want to learn how to eat with chopsticks, I'm going to have to do what? Receive knowledge. But how am I going to receive knowledge? Am I going to just do it by one of these people that raise their hands saying, this is how you do it? How am I going to receive the knowledge? How am I going to receive the skill? Got to do it myself. Are you hearing me now? So let's go back to our visitation. We're still eavesdropping on the father and Adam. What, what, what the father has done, he has placed in Adam, all of the knowledge that he needs without the tree. 
The only thing the tree will show him is who he is without God. I told you we're going to leave milk behind. We're not eating no milk this morning. I'm going to say that again. The only, why, listen, why is it that Satan enticed them in the first place? What did Satan say to them? I don't want to go over there and read it because I'm going to stay on track. He says, God didn't say, all God, I'm going to paraphrase, all God knows is that when you eat it, you're going to be just like him. Isn't that what he said in essence? Okay. Question, were they already like him? Yes, because the Bible says that he hath created us in his image, in his likeness. Likeness of kind, we are exact, he, Adam was an exact duplicate of God without needing to be God. So what happens is when he deviates from the instruction of God and they touch and eat the tree, now they see who they are, but they, ha- they see themselves without the glory of God in their lives. And listen to me well. We have spent, we in this generation and, and the previous generation and the generation to come, I don't know, have spent all our Christian lives, all our charismatic lives, believing God for the glory. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me today. I'm going I'm to I'm ride this horse, though. Because, see, we want the glory. Don't we want to see the Shekinah glory or the manifest heaviness presence of God? We want to walk in the door. and I I want to walk in the door instead of people talking amongst each other. They start talking to God, not being satisfied with shallow conversations, but coming before the presence of God in a holy manner, ready to worship, ready to pray, ready to knock out demons with one punch. Kick the devil out my house, out my life. But we've been satisfied searching for the glory when God has given us the glory and we don't know how to utilize it because we've been unskillful. Say amen to that. Okay, let's define one more, a couple more. Good, right? The knowledge of the tree of good and evil. Good. Again, this is from the, the transliteration from Hebrew to English. Good means good, pleasant, agreeable. Good, pleasant, agreeable. A good thing. Benefit, welfare, welfare as in benefits and good things. In other words, God took care of everything without him needing any other outside aid or support. But once he disobeyed God, he needed every bit of outside aid and support because he couldn't take care of himself. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't take care of ourselves without God. And the more we try, the worse off we get. Oh, I wish I could get a better amen than that. We try to, we try to do it our way. You can't have God your way. Christianity doesn't come your way. It comes through the way. His name is Jesus. Right? So what happens is we have taken on the same role. Many of us have taken on the same role that Adam and Eve laid before us because what they did when they disobeyed, they now were responsible for feeding themselves, clothing themselves, Healing themselves in essence, you know, they didn't have doctors, my God, but then they lived, lived six, seven, eight hundred years. And I'm going to tell you why in just a second. Why we only live until 85 or 100? <laughs> well, I didn't say that, she said that. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, along that line, because we take their wisdom greater than we take God's. If you really believe that you are already healed, I'm telling you, you do some things a whole lot different than what you do them. Oh, I better back up because if you really believe that you were blessed and prosperous, you really believe God's word from the from the mouth of God to the ears of your heart and the eyes of your understanding. We do things a whole lot different than we do. Most of us don't believe that that Jesus is coming back or that one day we're going to die because we walk around here like, you know, we do whatever we want, when we want, how we want to do it. And then we say, oh, Jesus, bless me. But there's a day of reckoning coming. There's a day of reckoning coming. And it's my job to tell you about that day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to back up. because. So you got good. Let's look at evil and define that real quick. Evil. Bad. I can say that to my grandson. Bad. He back up. He's two years old. He can't even talk hardly. But he knows what that means. Right? Evil. Distress. Misery. Injury. Calamity, all these are in that word, right there in Genesis 2. Calamity, evil, misery, distress, and injury. These are all the things that were in that tree. Every bit of them. 
The moment they stepped into a place, Dr. Chevelle says all the time, uh, 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 what's the word? Um, not transgression. Could I have told my cities? Huh? No, 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 no. It'll come to me. Uh, 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 treason. The moment they committed high treason against God is the moment that every, everything in the, in the get, get an apple out of your thinking, okay? If that helps you, so be it. But get an apple out of your thinking. But whatever that fruit consisted of, no matter, and, and she said it, Eve said it, it looks good. The devil pointed that out, so it had to look enticing. But, but the, the, the God didn't say that they could never eat it. He just said that they weren't going to eat it until he told them to. Come on now. Listen, how do I know that? Because God would not put a tree in the garden just to tempt his son and daughter. Are y'all with me this morning? So it wasn't there. Somebody said, well, why didn't he just not put the tree there? Because God never does anything without a plan. So, so, so now, when they do that, they, when, they, when, when they partake of this, they unlock all the evil and the good. But the good, listen to me, this is where we find people in, 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 in our society who are good moral people. They do all these little things good, but there's no, there's no uh, rebirth or there's no being born again in them. So they're just good people that eventually, until they receive the redemptive power of Christ by being born again, they are going to die and go to hell. Y'all know this stuff, right? Yeah. So now you can begin to see how important it is for us to understand and be skillful with the word of righteousness. You shouldn't have to have somebody pray for you all the time. When we gonna be the, the when we gonna be the lender and not the bower, bower like the word says? When we gonna be on top and not beneath? Somebody got to pick us up all the time, and we've been in the kingdom for more than five five months. A baby grows up on milk. Isn't that right? We had our grandson, one of the other grandson, Miles, over there the other, uh, yesterday, and, and they were showing me how much milk he drinks. That boy is growing by leaps and bounds. Can't talk, can't walk, but he sure can't eat. You, you drink milk? I don't feed you milk. I feed you meat. I take a steak any day of the week over some salad. That's just me. All my vegan and vegetarian friends, no offense, I'm just going to eat the steak. And I ain't going to blink. <laughs> Say amen, somebody. So we see that now. Let's keep going because I want to go to get a, get a little bit more here. Glory to God. Y'all all right? Eating from, you can write these down. Eating from this tree, again, would make Adam, not God, the determiner of right and wrong. So God says don't touch it because here's why, and, and, and I hear the Lord say this too. Some of, some, some of the people, and I declare there may even be some in this room, the reason why you have not become more skillful in the word of righteousness because you always want to know why. And it is, it is, a, it is a spirit of divination. It is a spirit of witchcraft. That causes you to need to know why when God tells you to trust him. God don't ask your permission before he brings a blessing your way. He don't need your permission to give you the blessing of his kingdom. He gave it through Jesus Christ. The moment I accept Jesus, all the blessings of Abraham are mine. And the only way I get to access them is by faith and trust in him. Why I got to do that? Why I got to tie? Baby, keep your money in your pocket because you are not going to walk in the fullness of God. You are not going to become more skillful if you don't just trust God and walk with it anyhow. I know, I know, I know. See, see, somebody say, well, is he mad? I'm not mad. I'm passionate, man. See, because see, God, is, God is, his desire and his, I see it already. I see it, I see it so much. Something happened to me on Friday. I wish I could tell you. I will tell you one day. I can't tell you now. So don't ask. Why you tell us? Because I'm going to tease you. That's me. Ain't that me? That's me. My wife calls me the mystery man. <laughs> but I, I'm here to tell you. See, see, because it, it walked into our lives and we weren't even expecting it. Oh, God, help me. We weren't even looking for it. But you know what we do? 
When we sit down at the table and confess the blessing of the Lord and confess the scriptures. Now, we don't do it every day. We don't have to do it every day because when I put that word out there, the Bible says that his word will not return unto him void. Hmm? Okay. Let me keep going. Getting a little happy. So eating from this tree again, would make Adam not God, the determined right and wrong. What I was saying was everything that need, Adam needed to know, he already had. Come on now, he had access to God un, 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 uninhibited. He, he could just walk up in the presence of God and they just talk. Yes, yes. See, we can't grasp that. You know why? Because we still believing for the glory. The Bible says Jesus Jesus is the way. He's not just the way. He, the Bible declares that he is the door to salvation. So if I walk in the door, then I can walk from, from this, my limited thinking side, into the realm of the spirit and hear what God has to say to me. But it don't work if I don't turn off Andy Griffith. It don't work if I watch more Biggest Loser or whatever your favorite show is. You say, well, I... I God still talks to me, not at the level he wants to. How do you know that? Let's go look, look at what you're driving. Let's go look how you're living. Well, my bills are paid. You already missed it. Because it's not about your bills being paid. Are you paying somebody else's bills? Do you have the capacity to sow into a mission fund? Do you have the ability to send an evangelist onto the mission? Do you? Do you? Huh? Is there a note on your car? Oh, I'm preaching better, y'all shouting. I'm not talking about condemnation. I'm just talking about there is more to this than what we're seeing. Point number two here. This certifies, again, with the discourse there we talked about with God and Adam, this certifies that the information, you need to write this down somewhere, spirit revelation from God was greater. This certifies that the information or the spirit revelation from God was greater than what the tree of the knowledge of good and evil could teach him. <laughs> this certifies that the information or the spirit revelation from God, I didn't get this out in a book, this is what the Lord gave me, I wrote this down as he was preparing my heart for this, that, that the spirit, excuse me, certifies that the information or spirit revelation from God was greater than what the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or physical sense knowledge, right, could teach him. Y'all got that? Do I need to say it again? Y'all got it? Say it one more time. This certifies that the information, I have in parentheses, spirit revelation from God was greater than what the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or physical sense knowledge could teach him. How do I know this? This way. Because God, <laughs> I want to make sure I don't get ahead of myself because I'm going to ask a question and I don't want to give away the answer. I want y'all still paying attention. Um, God put in Adam the ability to do everything that the garden needed to do, even to the point that Adam began to name animals that he had never seen before. He named a giraffe. God didn't name it. Where did he get hippopotamus from? Alligator, crocodile. Come on now. Where did he get it from? His connection with God. And God, there's no evidence that God was telling him, because the Bible says, you read it for yourself. I don't have time to go through all this. Y'all should know this. This is right in the beginning of the book. If what I'm saying to you is revelation to you, aha. God is sitting there bringing it. Next animal. I can see Adam as man. I don't know what he was standing, sitting, didn't matter. Get this. Adam named the serpent, serpent. Not God. So when the serpent came back, <laughs> the serpent came back, the serpent in its original configuration was not evil. Say amen to that. The, the, the serpent yielded its, itself to the devil. Come on now, where are my Bible people at? Help me. And when he yielded himself, listen, he, he yielded himself before Adam ate the fruit. Listen to me well. There are things in your life that you should not be touching. 
And because, not because, and I'm not going to stand up here and give you some long litany of what you shouldn't be doing. You read your Bible, you hear from the Holy Ghost, he'll tell you what you shouldn't be doing. You ain't putting that on me. And too many teachers and preachers and evangelists and apostles and prophets have taken that liberty on themselves. And that's not necessarily God. I'm just telling you. Because what that stuff does, it puts you in bondage. You know what you're not supposed to. You know you ain't supposed to be messing with another man's wife. You know you're not supposed to be messing with another woman's husband. Oh, I can't get no help in this place this morning. I'm going to tell you. Look, you know you're not supposed to take from your boss. You know you're not supposed to clock in late. You know you're not supposed to steal paper clips. You didn't pay for them. And we think somehow or another that the boss don't know, but the boss knows, baby. So when he took and partook of the fruit, it released the power for that for the for the serpent to take full possession for the devil to take full possession of the serpent and come back and bite him. So what happens is when we when we as skillful believers recognize now, see, understand this. You can't add to your goodness. Your goodness is not even your own. The Bible says, declares in the book of Romans, says that it is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. God released the goodness. When did he release the goodness? He released the goodness before the foundation of the world because that's when the Lamb of God, his name is Jesus, the Christ was slain for the salvation and remission of sins. So he released it then. All you and I have to do is partake of it and believe it. You need to start walking out of here with your head held high and your shoulders square and stop being so droopy like droopy the dog all the time, baby. That'd be nicer, but I don't have much time. So, so the next thing it did, this is, the, this is the one I held off on. I got to ask the question. When did death enter? I want nobody on this front row answered. Don't answer. Y'all supposed to be sitting up on the front row. You too. You too. No more. Don't answer. When did death enter the, into the, the scene? Somebody tell me. When they ate the fruit? And everybody who agrees with when they ate the fruit? A few of you? It's not, that's technically correct, but that's not correct. Where was death hiding all this time? Huh? The death was inside the fruit. It had to be. It had to be in there. Oh, God, help me. Let me show you. <clears throat> I need a King James Bible. Somebody give me a King, somebody got a King James Bible. Let me, have, let me have your King James Bible for a moment. Can I borrow it? Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Okay. Turn to, to uh, Genesis 2. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Father. Swing low. Sweet chariot. Coming for. Swing low. Sweet chariot. Coming for the carry. Well, I ain't ready to go home just yet, okay? I ain't ready to go home just yet. Thank you all for singing with me, but I ain't ready to go home just yet. <laughs> y'all so funny. Okay. Let's look at this from, from Genesis chapter 2. I'm over in 3, but I want to get back to chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, and I'm going to show you something. Are you all right? Yes. Ha, oh, city Oh, or it's different when you don't have your Bible in it. Even though it's the same word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, verse 15 says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Okay, so he's already got his assignment. Dress it, keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Okay, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The word evil there. Just like I showed you a few minutes ago, contains death. Death is, death was the epitome of evil. But listen to me. <laughs> Sorry for the distraction, that's my baby. But listen, it was there, but it was never to be released. Why? Why? Come on. Woo! 
know y'all know this. Say it louder. We were not meant to die. I can't get no help this morning, Elder. I can't get no help. You, 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 you were not designed to die. Does God die? He doesn't have a beginning, so he certainly has no ending. But what happens is he, release, <clears throat> he, he releases, when he takes the fruit, okay, diso listen, disobedience is the key to destruction. It is the key that unlocks everything contrary to the word of God. Like faith unlocks all of the blessing, disobedience locks, unlocks all of the curse. Isn't that right? So when he, when he partakes of the fruit, that's why I said he was technically right. Once he takes it, the key of disobedience already releases. Then it was just a matter of the deed being done. So death was not, and here's why, here, let me read on, <clears throat> excuse me. The reason why we know this is because death was not a part of the plan of God. He had no, he had no death intended for his, his creation. So if you're struggling with sickness and disease, terminal stuff, yeah, you can thank the devil, but you know what? Or thank Adam, but you know what? I believe Adam has repented. That's my own personal belief. You can do whatever you want to. Adam and Eve, okay? I believe we're going to see them when we get to heaven. But, but beyond that, what, what the master does, Jesus does, God help me. He now sends Jesus... The Bible calls him the propitiation or he is the he is the all ending uh, covering and, and removal of sin. He is the advocate, the lawyer. He is the destroyer of sin. He now is the one who has legal right to stand between in the court of heaven between you and Satan and God. And as Satan stands to accuse the brethren and say, Tommy's not worthy. Tommy took this. Tommy did that. No longer do I have to be scared or, or afraid. All I have to do is if I miss it, repent, get up and keep walking. And the blood of Jesus stands there at the ready and Jesus takes takes his blood and applies it lavishly to my life so I have free entrance into the presence of the living God. Is that right? And we have, we have, we have minimized it to a feeling. We have brought it down to a low denominator. We have brought it down to a place where we, it's just, it's almost where we, 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 it's more about us than it is about the plan of God that he intended for each one of us to walk in the blessing of Abraham. Yes. Does that mean we're going to live forever? Not in this body, in this world. Don't, you, you going to get this body back again. And mine going to be about 40 pounds lighter. Amen. And I ain't got to never worry about a diet another day in my life. Huh? Amen. Won't need any surgery on that body. Amen. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lipo what? No, no, no. Do what? No. Are you all right? Can I keep going? How many more minutes I got? Somebody show me some time. Okay. You'll get that in a minute. So the knowledge and the idea of death was not a part of Adam's destiny. At, notice this. Adam did not ask, what is death? No, he didn't ask that. There was no concept of it. Why, why are we talking about this? As we move into Galatians, which is where we're headed next after we conclude this part, you need to understand that <laughs> the fruit of the reborn spirit needs to be growing in our lives at such a level that we lose consciousness of what we need or what we want. <clears throat> I'm going to say that again. We need to allow it to grow to a, such a level in our lives that I lose consciousness of what I need or what I want. I want to be concerned, more concerned about what the kingdom needs and what people want. When you get that kind of minded, there's nothing God won't give you. <clears throat> Say amen to that. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord some praise. Can you do that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. So with that understanding, you need to be aware that all of this plays a part, part and parcel to where we're going. So let's go to the next point real quick. <laughs> 
So Adam didn't ask about what is death. God gave him all the information that he needed about death in, in the discourse between the two of them. In other words, if, 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 if Adam didn't need it, God wasn't going to give it to him. When, when I have, when I have, when I was raising our, our when we were raising our kids, I didn't, I didn't tell them stuff that they didn't need to know. Right? I mean, you as parents, grandparents, you know, the best thing you can do is give, stop, stop telling kids lies. Pull your religious toes in now because I hear it coming. Only warning I'm giving. Ain't no such thing as an Easter bunny. Santa don't exist. I'm sorry. I know there's babies in here, but you shouldn't be mad at me. You should have told me that a long time ago. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Come on now. And we run around here telling fables and fairy tales. You know what I'm saying? This stuff, it, there's no place for it in your life. Your child growing up believing, you know, believing all this stuff. I know, there, I know, I know the, 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 the other kids out there in, in, the, in the school system in the world doing it. There might be other people that say, well, I'm a Christian. I do. That's you. But you better understand what the Bible says. That, did, that didn't go over very well. But, but see, listen, listen to me, listen to me. When you start, introdu and when you start introducing little bits of untruth, they're seeds. And they start growing up thinking that not just those two, I just picked those two out at random as they hit my heart. But you know what? You know, uh, <clears throat> um, don't, don't go out there, baby. You'll get hit by a car. Come, am I right about it? And, and you out here, you know, you what you're trying to do is be protective. What you need to tell them is the baby cars, if they hit people, can hurt them. Yes. Isn't that a fact? Yes. So don't you go into the street. Not don't go out there, baby. You get killed. Uh, I don't. I don't. People. People. I'll give you another one. <laughs> God help me. I'm scared to fly. You ain't scared to fly. You scared to die. Isn't that right? Yeah. Call it what it is. And if you go before God with truth and open, God, Father, I do not like getting on airplanes. And the Holy Spirit begin to deal with you. He can tell you how to overcome that. You need to be somewhere so you're going to drive 25 hours instead of taking a two-hour flight. And spend more money in gas nowadays than you would. I know the terminals. I know hey, waiting in line. I know ain't no room on them planes, but I don't want to be in no car for 25 hours when it only takes an hour to get there. And the only rationale I have is because I'm scared. The Bible lets us know that fear, perfect love, casts out all fear, not some of it. So if you really love that child, you won't tell them a lie. You'll tell them the truth so that they don't grow up with a root of fear trying to grow up in them as they come up. Yes. And you're trying to figure out how it got there because you put it there, baby. Right. Right. Again. Yeah. So we said that he was, he was designed to have a perpetual existence. He was supposed to live forever. Mm -hmm. Write this down. I'm not going to turn it, but you can write this down. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 57. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 57. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. See, the thing, the thing about God, <clears throat> and as you study the scriptures, and as we move further into this thing, you'll start seeing things like Isaiah 46 and 10 says that, uh, in essence, that it is God. What God does is he declares the end from the beginning. So it's like, okay, well, if, if he declared the end of Adam before he began with Adam, that's why I can say that I believe Adam's going to be with heaven, in, in heaven with the Father. Because he didn't create Adam to fall. Do y'all see this stuff? Does this stuff... I, this comes from meditation in the word. You, you run around, somebody come up to you, and, and, you know, and again, you've been in church for six years. I'll just say six years. I'll put, get some people off the hook. You've been in church four years. I'm going down backwards. You've been in church two years, and you can't answer a question like, what happened to Adam and Eve? You ain't spent enough time in the word. Well, I don't know. I said this at yesterday's meeting. People say, well, what about dinosaurs? And you have no clue. Why would they be attracted to your knowledge and your God if you don't even know yourself? What about that thing that they did? Well, what they did did not. See, see listen, what you do does not define who you are Amen. when God has a plan for your life. All right. I got more notes than I got time. So just glory to God. 
Revelation 13, verse 8. You can write it down. I'm not going to turn there. See, see, what we see is that all that God knew and he had with Adam and Eve, or particularly Adam, before Eve showed up, Adam had everything he needed because of his, can I say it like this and not be, I don't want to be offensive, because of, of his umbilical connection to God. Moms nourish their babies long before their babies come out of the womb. And Jesus, I mean, Father was nourishing Adam and Eve, uh, and he had intended to do so. And I don't believe, you know, there's not a literal, literal uh, umbilical, but you could see that he was so intimate with them that whatever they needed was already provided for. All they had to do was just live. They just lived. Right? So, so, so now what he does is he, in essence, he severs that connection, and now he's, he's relegated to his own intellect and his own thought. Now, let's keep going so I can get done here. Um, glory to God. Uh huh. So somebody would ask you, and what die means? Die means literally to die, to kill, or to have one executed. And that's what that's what Satan was after anyway, to execute, execute them. Um, I've told you this before. I'll say it again, just for sake of understanding. When when Satan entices Eve, Adam's standing right there. <clears throat> what he's doing, in essence, is looking beyond them to get to the Father. I need a man. Stand up. Stand up, Mike. Stand up. Good, good positioning. Y'all look at me, not him, because I want you to see what I'm getting ready to do. I look at him as his enemy, and I'm after, I, I try to entice him, but I'm not really after him. I'm after, raise your hand, raise your hand, what he loves. Yeah. So what I do is I go through what, what the best avenue to get to her, because she's the one I want, is to entice him to step, move over, step, st move over. Move over, move over. Step out of position so I have clear access to her. That's what, you can sit down, thank you. That's what Satan did. He was after the Father. Remember, Scripture says, I will be like the Most High. I, I will establish my, thrones. He, my throne. He couldn't do it. But he gave it his best shot. And because he couldn't do it in Adam and Eve, though he tried, God took care of that, kicked them out the garden. They still had to work. Now, now they had to work for real. <laughs> now they really got to work. They're out of the garden. Satan is out too. Now these two, the man and the, and, the, and the serpent are at enmity against one another. But that did not change God's plan. It enhanced God's plan because now what God does, he's already sent Jesus, according to Revelation, before the foundation of the world, he sent Jesus, who is the lamb slain before it all began. And because he's been slain, now, stand up again. All he has to do is know, God, he has to just know that he's been born again. He has to know that he is redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. He has to know. And in his knowing, he's got to go like this. He's got to, yeah, he got to, he got to raise up and bow up. He's got to swell his chest up. He's got to spread his authority out and say, no, not today, devil. You're not getting what I love. Not today. And many of us are too passive, we're too weak, we're too, too used to having milk served to us. We want somebody to coddle us and pick us up and hold us and give us a baby bottle and put on a diaper. I ain't got no diapers for you, baby, I only got the word for you. But if you take the word and apply it, you will destroy all the works of the devil. Say amen, somebody. I ain't going out like that. Devil tried to kill you. I ain't going out like that. Amen. Bible says in Hebrews 9 and 27 that it is appointed unto man once to die. And if I'm going to die, I'm going to die on my terms, not no, not no sickness. I ain't dying broke. Been living these 56 and a half years. I sure ain't leaving, not leaving until I get mine. I, I'm going to get my stuff before I leave here, whatever it looks like. If you don't like it, if you get jealous, that's on you. But you better learn to be skillful in the word of righteousness. You better put the devil. The Bible says that they set the armies of the aliens to flight. My God. They rose up against the giants in the land and kicked them out. And the devil's job is to convince you that you, you're not able to take down a giant. 
You better know that, that where God is sending you is full of giants. Full of them. Full of giants. Sickness and disease. Jesus called them mountains in the New Testament. Did he not? He said you walk up and he talking both literal and spiritual, but he talking little. You can say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Somebody said, well, he didn't really mean it. See, that's your problem. That's your problem. Because you're trying to rationalize it. Ain't nothing rational about faith, baby. Faith is irrational. Faith is, 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 is crazy, ridiculous. I believe God in the face of a lie. I believe God in the face of a, a gun in my face and a, and, and a disease-riddled body. I believe God. True faith doesn't celebrate when you get the victory. True faith celebrates the moment you make a declaration. I say to my bank account, you will not be in the red. You will not be overdrawn. You will not come up short again. Ah, what you know, what you're doing this week, I'm saying the same thing. Amen. Got kids, loved ones out there running around, doing everything but serving the Lord. And you ain't helping. Well, I'm praying for them. Don't get me wrong. I can hear it now. But what else are we supposed to do? Say something. They don't want to be around you because you're always criticizing. Always criticizing. Always talking about what they're doing. Talk, start talking about how you see them in, 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 in this life and then beyond. Baby, I know what you're going through right now. And mama don't like it. And daddy ain't happy. But I'm telling you that I talked to God. I had a conversation with the master. And he said that I can have whatever I say. You will not go to hell. You will not die early. You will not, you will not go the devil's way. You will not. Can we do that? I'm doing it. Ain't nobody in my family going to hell, Roger, not one of them. Amen. Even if I ain't on the planet to see it, I know it's so. Amen. I'm declaring the end of this thing from the beginning. Yes. Can you do that? Amen. Maybe you can't. I just did. <laughs> it's that kind of church. You need to saddle up. Some of y'all need to get your saddle back out. Get that tag, all that stuff together. Put a new bridle on. Come on. Get some new shoes on that horse. Get you some saddle bags so you can just throw out the glory of God wherever you ride. Huh? Isn't that what Boaz did? Some of y'all don't even know who Boaz is. Read your Bible. You're unskillful. Stop being unskillful. You ought to be teaching this stuff by now. I said you ought to be teaching this stuff by now. Well, that's your job. Really? There you go again. I couldn't do that. There you go again. And you waiting for God to bless you. Bless me. He's trying to bless you, baby. He's trying to bless you. He's trying to bless you. He got you born again. What else? What, why else would you be born again just to go to heaven and be with him? See, where you're going, where you're going, where you're headed cannot be, cannot be hindered by where you've been. Many of us, I had to get over it. In 2003, when the Lord changed my thinking, showed me how religious I was, it started the process of what I'm telling you right now, okay? So I'm telling you what I've lived and what I know. But too many of us want to stay at the time in our lives when we were the happiest, even if it's behind us. So in my thinking and in my fantasy life, because we all got one, in my fantasy life, my thinking, I can remember when I, as a young you know, stud of a basketball player, could rise up and just tear the rim down. And that's all well and good, but I ain't living there no more. I, I, I open myself up, listen, I open myself up to vain imaginations. 
The Bible says in Romans 12 that we have to renew our mind. Romans 12, 1, 2, and 3, and all of it's good. So, so you, you start seeing that you need to renew your mind because your vain imagination will keep you from the destiny that God has for you. And now, when we see it in the context of, of Eve and Adam, what we see is the enemy interjects an imagination that did not come from the Father. And each one of us, listen to me well, close your books because I'm finished. When it, when it comes to the things we allow in our eyes and ears, these things come with attachments, spiritual attachments that cannot, excuse me, can rarely be seen. And when we, and I know this because it's like me, I use Tide detergent. I do the laundry at my house because I don't want her doing it. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with my hands. She was feeding babies. I was doing laundry. That's what teams do. And so I buy, I buy Tide because my mama bought Tide. <clears throat> I bought it the first time not even knowing that. You will gravitate to things in your life and do them and not know why unless you submit yourself completely to the rule and the authority of the master. And when you are in the presence of the living God, he gets down in there and starts digging up stuff before it has an opportunity to derail your destiny. So to my sister's comment a bit ago, your first call should not always be to the doctor. Come on. I'm not living from miracle to miracle. I'm living in the blessing. And <clears throat> I remember the first time I heard, the first message I heard taught on the blessing. You know what I did? I choked. I'm going to say it again. I choked on it because I thought the wrong way. I thought all they was talking about was money. And I didn't have none. And anything you ain't got, when somebody tells you about they having it, you'll choke on it. And I said they having it on purpose. They got a Rolex and you got a Timex. They got a 12-bedroom mansion, and you got a one-bedroom flat. You better know who you are. They invite you over for dinner, and you come in. Y'all work together. Y'all making the same salary. Yeah, okay. Okay. They driving this, and you driving that, and y'all been, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I work with Kelsey. Kelsey worked with me. I, I've been working here longer. And then you know what I do? What I ain't supposed to do, because no employer allows this. How much money are you making? <laughs> I ain't worked for one yet that'll do it, allow it. Yeah. That ain't the question. That is not the question. Kelsey shows up on time. Kelsey does not lie on his timesheet or punch in wrong. He don't call up Caleb and say, hey, punch me in, man. I'm in the parking lot. Oh, I ain't getting no help. Okay, okay. He, he, he don't steal paper clips. I, I, it's only a paper clip. Are you feeling me? And if we're doing it, we're unskillful. My job is to get you to be more skillful. And my wife and I have gotten more skillful. And it's starting to show in our lives. Don't get jealous. It ain't coming from y'all. I love y'all. Thank y'all. For, for what I get from this ministry, I don't even establish that. The board of directors establishes that. I ain't had a raise in a long time. That's okay. I'm all right with it because my pay is not connected to the money that I get for my salary. My pay is what I, connected to what I release into these baskets, what I release into the people's lives that God calls me to bless. And it's starting to gain momentum, y'all. Oh, help me, Lord. Stand to your feet. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. That chest shoulder, I still hear it. <clears throat> but I'm going to suggest to you now, you just lay your hands, same anointing, should be in my life on yours. But I do, I do hear it. I've heard it again, so I know, it's, I know it's here. Maybe you don't know, or I don't know. I don't know, maybe. But it's there. You've had some pain, some challenges, and I keep reaching over here to my left side, and I'm believing it's there, right in this area, right in this area, almost like a tightness or stiffness or something. And, and, <clears throat> and I can hear the Lord say that whoever it was, when it first happened or started happening, you felt scared because you thought somehow or another you were having a stroke or a heart attack, but you're not. All you got is some inflammation. Just lay your hand on it go away. Can't be no more simple than that. Amen. Praise God. Let your hands open your hearts. I want you to say this after me. I am, I am becoming, becoming more, skillful more skillful in the word of God. The word of God. I, am I am learning, learning how, important how important it is for me, it is for me to release my faith, to release my faith through, God's through God's word. I am, I am not just a hearer, just a hearer but rather a, doer but rather a doer of the word of God. Word of God. I am a clearing house for the, for the blessing of God to bless others. I am a faith man, you or woman. Say that. I am a faith man. I am created in his image. I do submit myself to God. Now pause right there. All right. You're submitted to God. How are you there? By faith. Even if you're not born again. You're submitted by faith. Yeah. If you're not born again, get born again right now. Right now. Yeah. Okay? Jesus, I accept you as my Lord. I repent of my sin. That's it. And mean it from your heart. That's it. Simple enough. Yeah. All the other stuff. Now, from the pause, I want you to say this with the authority, the same authority I said. Satan, Satan. in the name, in the name of, Jesus, of Jesus, go, go. Now. now. Done. 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 Yeah. Now, y'all got to say done. 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 When he shows up again, tell him, done. It's over. He going to come back. Over. Change the lock. It's done. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand to praise. You are dismissed. We love you. Thank you for coming out. We'll see you next time. Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you real soon. Thank you for coming.